smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. Well, today is the Great American Smoke Out. Every year on the third Thursday of November, smokers across the nation are encouraged to take part in the American Cancer Society's Great American Smoke Out event. Dr. Joel Nitzkin, board certified in preventive medicine with a master's in public health, joins us today with some facts and figures that might just make you want to join in on the American Great American Smoke Out as well. And, Doctor, we welcome you to the program. It's good to be here. Did I say your last name properly? Yes. Oh. Thank goodness. All right. Well, I want to get that right as well. Now, you've been involved in the uh, tobacco control activities since the late 70s. During the course of all these years, how how much have things changed? I know there's much more awareness and attention, and uh, and it is helping. But what have you seen over the course of all these years with smoking and cancer and uh, the smoke out and everything else? Well, what we've seen over this time is the prevalence of smoking going down from about 40% in the 1960s to 15% today. So Americans have gotten the message and have either quit smoking or never started. But there's still 36 million Americans who smoke cigarettes. And there are still an estimated 480,000 Americans each year who die from cigarette smoke. And I'm, uh, both my parents were smokers. That is that is what eventually took their lives, as far as that goes. But I know that they uh, they did indicate that um, many times they did try to quit. It's not impossible, but it is up there as far as being challenging and very difficult. A lot of people want to. It does take a support system. There are various methods that people will go through. But uh, what what kind of advice would you give for anybody that that is trying to, but just can't get over the hump of that? Well, if you're trying to and you just can't get over the hump, there are some new products out there that might make a huge difference. Um, Electronic cigarettes are at the top of the list. Now, they're not risk-free, but they present a risk of serious illness that's probably less than 1%, the risk posed by cigarettes. And my advice to people who've tried and been unable to quit and really want to quit is to go visit your local vape shop, talk with them, and try various things that they have there to offer. See if you can find one that will satisfy your urge to smoke. Uh, You talk. uh, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So that will provide the nicotine without all the nasty chemicals that cause all the illness and and, um, death with cigarettes. Again, they're not totally risk-free, but uh, they're probably less than 1% the risk of cigarettes. Now, I'm, I'm aware of uh, vaping is what they call it. I've never, I've never done that, so I don't really know what all is involved there, but I, uh, I'm seeing here that uh, some states like California and Minnesota are uh, outlawing, I guess, flavored tobacco products. What do they do they flavor the vapors with vapes, too, and does that only just cover the tobacco products like uh, flavored cigarettes or something? No, that includes uh, vape products. The reasons for the vans and the bans for flavored products in California and several other places have done this, too, is out of fear that the flavored products might uh, attract teenagers who otherwise would not have begun smoking to start using these flavored products. Um, In point of fact, we have the research data to show that that just isn't happening. The vast majority of uh, kids who who take up vaping are kids who are already smoking and using the vape products to quit smoking. And, um, you know, kids will experiment with stuff. So there are a lot of kids experimenting with this stuff and the vast majority of them who weren't smokers to start with never continue with either the e-cigarettes or regular cigarettes. Well, growing up, uh, certainly my parents' smoking was an aggravation to me, and I would try to encourage them to quit often. I would often joke that I've been a lifelong secondhand smoker, too, so the other people breathe the same air. Uh, how much of a risk factor to non-smokers is that secondhand smoke, and does it does it um, elevate in a non-smoker? 
Oh, yes, it does. An estimated 50,000 of the deaths that are attributed to smokers are in non-smokers who are exposed to uh, secondhand smoke. So um, if you have any tendency towards asthma or pulmonary disease, uh, it'll aggravate that. It'll increase the risk of uh, heart disease, certainly, and may increase the risk of lung cancer, just being exposed to secondhand smoke. Well, understanding the the um, the power of the addiction, um, and and certainly having sympathy for anybody who who has become enslaved by tobacco, uh, I've been surprised to see several people on oxygen that would continue to partake in the thing that got them in that condition to begin with. <laughs> Not only that, though, when you have a source of oxygen around your face and a lighted cigarette that is such a scary scary thing to see people do and yet i do see it quite often well the people you see are really addicted to cigarette mm -hmm. smoke mm -hmm. which is another advantage of the e-cigarettes with e-cigarettes there's no combustion there's no flame and you can get the nicotine without getting the other nasty chemicals and until very recently, you know, most doctors and most people making recommendations have been leery of e-cigarettes, afraid of them, fearful that they might be as dangerous as regular cigarettes. Now we know that they're not. And I would expect to see in the next year, you know, a, a lot of advice changing from official sources. Certainly, um, Mitch Zeller, who's in charge of uh, the Center for Tobacco Products at the Food and Drug uh, Administration, has noted that there's a spectrum of risk comparing different types of tobacco products. And Scott Gottlieb, the new director of FDA, is really committed to letting people know that they can reduce their risk of illness and death by switching to a lower-risk product. Of course, switching, you know, quitting entirely is best, but if you can't quit, you can switch. And once you switch, you'll find yourself on a product that over time you may be able to go down to zero nicotine in your e-cigarettes and quit those too. By inhaling a pollutant into your lungs, are all pollutants created equal uh, by way of uh, cigarette, cigars, and pipe tobacco? Well, when you're dealing with cigarettes, uh, cigarettes have this tendency to create these very tiny particles of tar that are so small, they get by the body's, all the body's natural defenses, and they wind up lodging in the alveoli of the lung. This is the air sac of the lung, and once they're lodged there, they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week for months, if not years. Just don't give up. All right. We certainly appreciate you being with us today. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks again.